For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. The teacup. There was a couple who traveled to England to shop in a beautiful antique store, spotting an exceptional teacup. They asked, may we see that? We've never seen a cup quite so beautiful. So uh, as the lady handed it to them, suddenly the teacup spoke. You don't understand, it said. I have not always been a teacup. There was a time when I was just a lump of red clay. My master took me and rolled me, pounded and patted me over and over, and I yelled out, don't do that, I don't like it, let me alone. But he only smiled and gently said, not yet. Then wham, I was placed on a spinning wheel and suddenly I was spun around and around and around. Stop it! I'm getting so dizzy. I'm going to be sick. But the master only nodded quietly and said, Not yet. He spun me and poked and uh, prodded and bent me out of shape to suit himself and then, then he put me in the oven. I never felt such heat. I yelled and knocked and pounded at the door, help, get me out of here. I could see him through the opening and I could read his lips as he shook his head from side to side, not yet. When I thought I couldn't bear it another minute, the door opened. He carefully took me out and put me on the shelf and I began to cool. Oh. That felt so good. Ah, this is much better, I thought. But after I cooled, he picked me up and he brushed and painted me all over. The fumes were horrible. I thought I would gag. Oh, please stop it. Stop it, I cried. He only shook his head and said, Not yet. Then suddenly, he put me back into the oven, only it was not like the first one. This one was twice as hot and I just knew I would suffocate. I begged, I pleaded, I screamed, I cried. I was convinced I would never make it. I was ready to give up. Just then the door opened and he took me out and again placed me on the shelf where I cooled and waited and waited, wondering, what's he going to do to me next? An hour later, he handed me a mirror and said, look at yourself, and I did. I said, that's not me, that could not be me, it's beautiful, I'm beautiful. Quietly he spoke, I want you to re remember back to the beginning, he said. I know it hurt to be rolled and pounded and patted, but had I just left you alone, you would have dried up. I know it made you dizzy to spin around on the wheel, but if I had stopped, you would have crumbled. I know it hurt and it was hot and disagreeable in the oven, but if I hadn't put you there, you would have cracked. I know the fumes were bad when I brushed and painted you all over, but if I hadn't done that, you never would have hardened. You would not have had any color in your life. If I hadn't put you back in that oven the second time, you wouldn't have survived for long because the hardness would not have held. Now, you are finished product. Now you are what I had in mind 
when I first began with you. God knows what he is doing with each of us. He is the potter and we are his clay. He will mold us and make us and expose us to just enough pressures of just the right kinds so that we may be made into a flawless piece of work to fulfill his good, pleasing and perfect will. The man who follows Christ in solitary mourning is greater than he who praises Christ amid the congregation of men. My Lord Jesus Christ, you suffered for me so that I may be redeemed. Help me, Lord, to share in your sufferings.